Good evening and welcome to 60 Seconds and the Final Prayer for Monday, July 13, 2020. I'm going to make some modifications in the Mass schedule. So one has already been made. You no longer need a ticket to come into the outdoor Masses on Saturday, Sunday. But you do need to bring a page from your home with your name and the names of each person in your group, address, phone number, and email if they have it. So if people got the part of the message, they don't need the ticket, but they didn't get the part of the message about bringing the page from home. So yes, we do need a page with your name and the name of all the people in your group with name, address, phone number, email if they have it. We keep those for two weeks in case there's an outbreak of coronavirus, we can get in contact with you. So please be sure and bring that page with you. What's the experience? I said we look at our experience of these outdoor masses after four weeks. Uh, I didn't have time today. I just got the response back from the bishop. I just wrote him yesterday, so he's a quick responder. But uh, I'll put this into a graph so you can see them better for tomorrow night's presentation or the next night. But uh, the total of, on July 12, putting together all four masses, all four of the masses, so 7 and 7, 8.30, Saturday and Sunday, we had a total of 51 July 12, a total of 64 July 4, a total of 56 June 27, and a total of 47 on June 20. So there doesn't seem to be any real pattern of growth there. It's hovering right around 50. So that's about 10 to 14, per, 11 to 14 percent of what our usual mass attendance is at that time. So our Sunday mass on 7.30 in the summer, ooh, anywhere from 180 to 350. So you can see we're a long ways off from that. Uh, so just to know that you no longer have to have a ticket. Uh, the new part is that I requested permission for, and uh, it is our church capacity is 40 with all the distancing. Our experience of picking, and we'd have to get a ticket for that one if we do that, but, or make a reservation online, but I say it's 40, but our experience with the outdoor masses, the ticketing and signing up online is almost a third who picked up a ticket did not show up for the mass. So that means we'd be squeezing in about 30 people a mass. You probably get to mass every two months once. So what I ask for is uh, we'll begin the first Sunday of each month the first Sunday of each month, the first Sunday of each month, so the first Sunday of each month, we will be in the parish center with our regular Sunday morning mass schedule, 9 o'clock English, 11 o'clock bilingual, 1 o'clock Spanish. So that will be starting the first month of August, that will be August 3rd, and September 6th, the second month of that. And then we'll see uh, how that works. You will need a reservation. You will need a ticket. I'm thinking that at the end of two months, we'll probably say you don't. I don't expect to get anywhere near our capacity for the parish center. But at least at the beginning, just to be sure, we will ask you to get a ticket or to pick up a ticket at the office the week of that Mass. So August 3rd will be the first one. September 6th will be the next one. That will be a regular Sunday morning Mass, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock. For those of you who cannot come or don't want to come for any reason to the Perry Center Mass, we will, of course, have our Mass streamed at 9, 11, and 1, as we do every Sunday right now. You can participate through YouTube. Okay. I think that's all I want to say on that. So uh, let's go into the daily prayer for today. It's from Sacred Space. It's a guided meditation. It's the daily prayer from Sacred Space for Monday, July 13th. Uh, by now you know the guided meditation I'll be making periodic pauses. It's not because I went to sleep, but it's a time to uh, enter into prayer with God. And uh, it's all, you can repeat this and take longer pauses. That's really the best way to do it. Uh, I, my pauses are relatively short. It always begins, this Jesuit website from the Irish Jesuits, always begins with something to think about and pray for this week, or pray about this week. An act of prayer. None of us knows the future. None of us knows when we will meet a sudden darkness in our lives. None of us knows the moment when the most essential thing will be that the lamps of our faith be well supplied with oil 
so that we can show the light of Christ to those around us and to those who love us. To be able to do that is not a matter of a moment's impulsive courage. It's a matter of a person's lifelong character. It is the outcome of a life well lived in love and in prayer. That's taken from Hope in All Things by Paul O'Reilly, a Jesuit. Paul O'Reilly, S.J., pages 23, 24. And now to our prayer. We begin by putting ourselves in the presence of God. I pause for a moment and think of the love and the grace that God showers on me. I'm created in the image of likeness of God. I am God's dwelling place. Freedom. Lord, I let go of the worries, resentments, and fears that I can sometimes hold on to so tightly. Let me open my hands and my heart to receive freely all the gifts that I need at this time. Consciousness. Life is busy, Lord. Often my best intentions are left undone. But I know that you are with me in all I say and do, and in everyone I meet with daily. The Word of God for today. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 34 to 11, and verse 1. Uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, up to chapter 11, verse 1. <clears throat> Jesus said, Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take off the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his twelve apostles, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in their cities. Some thoughts on today's scripture. Today's readings contain some of what are called the hard sayings of Jesus. Choosing to follow him means some hard choices in life some involving our closest relationships. In the depth of my heart, I know this is true and look back at when I paid a high price to follow. Jesus and his values. And at other times when I was not brave enough to do so. I pray for a generous and strong spirit. Those who find their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Finding and losing my life? Can anything be more important for me than this? The experience of the pandemic makes this very clear, yet I realize there are many levels of finding and losing one's life. I ask for the grace to know how to lose my life for the sake of Jesus. Conversation. Dear Lord, help me to be always aware of the important things in life, to care for those around me, to seek your presence in all I meet. Conclusion. I thank God 
for these few moments we have spent alone together and for any insights I may have been given concerning the text of this gospel. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come to us all and remain forever. Thank you for being with us again, and good night.